Hello kids, welcome to Macroeconomics 101. My name is Professor Che, and today we're gonna to be talking about supply and demand, so make sure you guys have your notes ready, and let's just jump right into it. All right, so first off, when you come to supply and demand, there's gonna be tons of graphs to consider. You're gonna to have to do your X and your Y coordinates, and make sure you label them, and at the same time, you're gonna need, you know, your this line, your slope equals Y, MX plus B. That was a lot of information, but I hope you guys got your notes well. Remember, there's gonna be a quiz tomorrow, and class dismissed. Ay, 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 can you believe that professor? What a dick, right? Talks too fast, doesn't even know what he's talking about. I'm gonna go write a bad review on Rate My Professors. Anyway, you guys know what's happening. Today we're talking about how to take notes in college. Now, this is a super highly requested video. Everyone wants to seem to know how I'm taking notes. And to be honest, I am not the best note taker, but I will say I wish I was a better note taker and that's something I'm gonna be improving and working on throughout the year. But it is such an important skill for any college student, even high school students, to take efficient and practical notes so that when you go back to your room to study that you have a clear outline of what was talked about in the lecture. So you can best prepare yourself for any kind of tests, quizzes, or essays that's gonna come up. Now, there are a couple different ways people like to take notes in college. There's a traditional notebook and pencil, there's laptop, there's tablets, there's audio recordings, there's a bunch of different stuff which I will kind of dive into today. Now, as you guys probably know, I am a very tech savvy person, meaning I love to have my iPad Pro in just about all my classes and take notes that way using my Apple Pencil and my Apple Keyboard. I just think it's a way more efficient system and even though people say that, oh, you're not going to retain as much information, since I'm still writing it using the Apple Pencil, it just saves me a lot of time and I'm able to access it from anywhere. I'll dive into a little bit more of that later, but if your preference is handwritten notes, then let me give you my tips for that. First off is have a good notebook. I can't emphasize the importance of having a strong, durable, plenty of pages, college width or even wide ruled notebook. Personally, when I used to write handwritten notes, what I would do is buy the three subject notebook or even just like one subject for 100 pages per class that I had. The downside to that is you're carrying around three to four different notebooks rather than one cohesive place where all your notes are and it just it can just get, get a little bit messy if you're not organized. However, I will say that there are a few benefits of taking handwritten notes. First off, if you have clean handwriting, then you can doodle and you can make it as clean and as pretty as you like. But if you're someone like me who doesn't have the best handwriting, doesn't have the time or the energy to take the notes with all the different colored pens and all that crap, I will say though that you need to figure out some kind of system when it comes to taking handwritten notes. There are way smarter people than me that have come up with actual ways to take notes. There's like the T method and just a bunch of different stuff. If you do your research, you'll find plenty of them online. But make sure you have an organized system regardless of whatever it is that you're doing. So something for lecture notes, something for seminar notes, something for your vocab. Another thing that I don't like about taking handwritten notes is that it's hard to move stuff around, meaning that you can't just copy and paste like you can on a keyboard. You have to physically either like cut it up and paste it on a different page if you want to move it to a different section and it just gets a lot of hassle that I don't like to deal with. Which is why I'm going to move on to laptop and tablet note taking. This has obviously been the way recently, everything's gone digital, everything's on your laptop. The downside to this is that, you know, students get distracted, obviously I'm a victim of that, I will be texting or surfing the web while I should be paying attention in lecture. However, I think that the speed and the convenience of typing on your laptop is unparalleled, meaning that my hands can type way faster than I can write l listening to what a professor is saying. Although I don't recommend typing word for word what that professor is saying, what I like to do is I pay attention to the professor, hear what he's saying, and then synth synthesize it in my own words and write it down in my own notebook. That way I have my own definition of what that professor is saying rather than just paying attention to what he's saying so I can type it up fast enough and then not pay attention to the actual lesson that he's teaching. Although it's hard at first figuring out what's important and what's not, it's gonna save you a bunch of time after you start developing these skills because then you just prioritize what you need to know and you can use that later on when you study. Another great thing about taking notes digitally is that you can add on to them after class. So you know how when you're taking handwritten notes and you fill up a page and you have to go to a different page? Well, with OneNote or with Notability, those are the two apps that I use. You can expand your pages as long as they need to be. You can insert graphs, you can insert photos, and it just it makes it a lot more convenient. Going off the software that I use, there are a couple different ones, using them for different purposes in different classes. The first off is OneNote. This is a Microsoft app. Most likely it will be included with your university's email. And I personally have used this for a bunch of my classes. You can create different notebooks depending on what course you're in. So if you wanna do by sections or chapters, it's up to you. And then even within that, you can customize it even more. The app is also integrated with the OneNote app on the iPad. So when I need to do handwritten notes, I will 
hit, write them on there and then I can see them on my computer as I'm writing and then use that for another purpose. Notability is a very popular software as well. I think it looks a little bit more aesthetic than OneNote. It's a little bit easier to use. However, that I personally just use when it comes to handwritten stuff, not the typing stuff because I don't think it's as fast and as intuitive as OneNote, but when you need to write stuff or draw stuff or graphs or any kind of representation where you're gonna be doing physical drawings, I recommend Notability. Now my final software that has been a huge game changer for me lately is called PDF Element, which is a sponsor of today's video. When it comes to college, there are gonna be dozens and dozens of PDFs that you're gonna get. That's the most convenient form for professors to you know, pass out lectures or notes or homework, and it's just a big hassle to have to go to the library, print it out, and then mark it up, and then scan that back and then send it back to your laptop when in reality using a software like pdf element is going to make that workflow way easier so at princeton we have a lot of classes that require p sets which are called problem sets and they're weekly assignments all uploaded to a website where you have to download or print it out and then fill it out on a separate sheet now what i personally do is i use pdf element to import that and then i can either mock it up circle underline highlight anything that i need to do because the versatility of the software is unlike anything i've ever seen and when i found out that it could actually do the some of the features that I was trying out, I was like, wow, this is pretty incredible. If you aren't very tech savvy and don't know a lot about PDFs, they're really hard to edit, meaning that you have to import it into a separate program and a lot of programs don't have the features that this one does. The fact that you can highlight text and actually edit it in the same font, in the same style, insert pictures, edit links, that's really hard to do in a PDF format and this software just makes it so seamless. Another great feature is you can combine and convert PDFs with the software, meaning that if you need to take maybe page two and page four of a big presentation and just combine it into one single PDF, it can easily do that within that software. And it's if you haven't done it before, trust me, it's a huge hassle having to upload it online and then have to download it and compress it and then download it and rename. It's like, trust me, this software is gonna save your life if you're a college student. Now for a limited time, PDF Element Express is available for 50% off. I've linked it down below. Make sure you guys go check them out. If you're a college student, I can't recommend a software like this enough because it's just gonna save you so much time. And that's the biggest thing when it comes to note taking in college is that you wanna be the most efficient and productive with the amount of time that you have because when you're in lecture, you wanna retain as much information as possible, still take good notes and use them later on when you're studying for anything else. Now, my final tip when it comes to note taking is the option of audio recording. Now, this is kind of controversial, not super controversial, but like something you should look into with your university because some professors may not allow you to record in their lectures but it is a good option if you are a slow writer or a slow listener the way that you can do it is just set it up on any kind of voice recording on your phone on your voice memos or something and then just let it record throughout the entire lecture and that way you can go back to your dorm room and listen if you missed out on a key part or just want to listen to re-listen to the whole lecture the downside and the reason that i don't personally do that is it's just too time consuming i already sat through an hour lecture there's no way i'm gonna have time for me to go back to my dorm room and listen to it for another hour because I was dumb or fell asleep and didn't pay attention the first time. Other great tips when it comes to taking notes is create study guides as you go. Now this has been a huge vital tip for me and when I started doing it, it just increased my workflow when it came to final season or midterm. So what I mean by that is every few weeks or so, compile all the notes that you've taken from the past few lectures and start putting them into one Google Doc. Make sure you're formatting it as you go. Have some sort of way to list out your vocab definitions, the key terms of what was talked about in that chapter. If you add on to this little by little every few weeks or so, once you get to finals or midterm season, it's going to make your life a breeze because you don't have to waste the time to go through and compile an actual study guide because you've already done it throughout the semester. Trust me on this one, you can thank me later, but you guys know I got your back. Now, obviously note-taking is a very important skill. It's a skill that needs to be developed. And like I said, I'm still working on it and I hope to have better tips that I can share with you guys in the future. This is just a crash course on note-taking. Obviously there are tons of videos that go more into depth, but this is just from what I personally do and from what my friends have done. And you know, when it comes to note-taking, you gotta do what's best for you. If you're a handwriter, then go with the handwritten notes. If you like typing, then go with that. At the end of the day, whatever you need to do to be best prepared is gonna be the best option for you. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this back to school series. Once again, I keep emphasizing September 1st, this book is going live. I'll make a whole video talking about all its features later, but I just went through the final edit today and it basically takes you all the way from freshman year to senior year to writing the applications, letters of recommendation, financial aid, scholarships, you know, all the way up into your actual freshman year. Since I've had that experience, I wanted to share that with you guys. Pre-move and acclimating mental health, physical health, uh, finding extracurriculars, balancing your academics, picking a major. I outlined it every single step of the way for you guys. So September 1st, mark your calendars. That's it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.